everybody welcome back to the Jeep journals and today I am training my way back into US 385 shape what is US 385 I'm glad you asked some of you who are keener on these videos might recognize that my patch here has changed to a different domain another domain of mine I'm pretty fluid when it comes to myself. I don't have a constant persona. My persona is always expanding its horizon. And so myself is dynamic. I'm dynamic, just as dynamic as you are, just as powerful as and as, as important confirmation as you are. And so as I'm placed here in the traffic that I'm in, recognizing this, remember earlier in, in my last segment that was just over an hour long, I talked about how I was on, on, I was basically piloting the vehicle without using the autopilot. So right now, I have the adaptive cruise control on so that I can safely navigate the traffic that's happening in front of me. I still have to remain keen and observant to see if someone suddenly switches lanes tries to jump in in the free space that's in front of me because I do leave car lengths in front of me and sometimes with the way traffic is going I might have obstructed field of vision I don't know if you noticed it but I basically picked up my foot to apply the brakes the system the adaptive cruise control system took care of that for me anyway in some instances especially when some of the thought logic is able to be de deferred, delegated, as it were, to some elsewhere, to some other place, then sometimes we can express anger and pain in just a way that is beneficial when we express those releases. In my perhaps unique opinion, I believe that nobody should strike someone else out of hostility. If somebody is acting beyond controllable in a situation where they may immediately provide some kind of a threat level to your own well-being, is it okay to slap someone into paying attention? See, it dep everything depends on the actual level of violence that's being wielded in the scenario that we're in. So of course we're able to perceive there's one vehicle in front of me that just moved over, watch. Adaptive cruise controls opening her up. And here we go. Ah, the wide open freeway with no traffic in front of me. But did you see me stressed out at all in the stop and go traffic back there? <laughs> It might have just been that I had to, okay, so you noticed something. It might have just been that I had to pay a little bit more attention to who was merging into traffic with me, but I'm still talking about the ability to communicate. You're able to comprehend what I'm saying, right? Who here is listening to the fact that my vehicle just accelerated me to 68 miles per hour? I'm now adjusting my speed to the speed limit, 70 miles per hour being notified of a traffic jam up ahead somewhere, I'm being told it's 17 minutes away from where I'm going, I'm turning off the navigation so it doesn't talk and interrupt our thought processes. However, I'm also telling you that synchronicity provides you with, when you do the trust but verify aspect of everything you're, you're approaching in life, you can either make work for yourself or make yourself your work. If I want to resolve any of the chaos around me, first I must quell the want to not be in chaos. Or actually the other way around. You see, so traffic picked up again and you saw I tripped myself up on my words. We should not want to keep ourselves in a state of chaos. So if we go into a place like nature for a walk, let's just say we go for a walk, which 
knowledge. That's the whole purpose of this story. I went for a walk and I thought these deep thoughts and now I'm bringing to you knowledge saying, when we go for a walk, why are some people turning up the stereo systems, the speaker systems, the phones, tuning each other out? And why are some people actually seeing one another? Today I saw someone three times on the trail. The first two times there was something about the timing of when we parked and everything where I thought, I bet there's something crossing paths with people out here for a reason. Some of the people I talked with just maybe a month ago don't even remember me when they see me on the trails anymore. Some of us are a little bit amped up too amped up to see one another enough to say, hey, have a great day. When we cannot inspire one another enough to say, hey, howdy from Texas, (laughs) y'all. Where are you tuning in from? Right now I'm in San Antonio, Texas. I feel like I'm about to take on a mission that's driven by you, the participant, who's going to say, you know what? I want to see this story happen. I'll give a dollar to that. That first dollar will unlock a landslide of dividends. Because my mission is the same as your mission. And every dollar, every interest in the form of energy possible that's necessary to save this planet. Confirmation. Listen. To save this planet. It's like calling lightning out when it was going to strike. When I do this in nature with my friends and they see the synchronicities, and when I talk and when the lightning flashes, did any of of you see the Bob Marley concert where the lightning flashed when he was playing on stage? The synchronicity it took for that dream, that collective dream, to be made into such a compelling story. How compelling does it need to be? And at what cost does it have to come? Before we understand what our subscriptions mean. When we subscribe to conflict, we bring conflict into our own homes. And we can look around every day at how disorderly we can become, how quickly we can become disorderly, just in the circumstance of how we address the things that are around us. Do we make our own bed? One time, somebody who was extremely in favor of me, who knew that I would back up Equal pay, for an example. Things that make sense. Who knew, who knows that I will always uphold the value of equality and hearing someone else's story. Why? Because I know how it feels to not be heard. Don't you? Isn't it kind of refreshing when you're heard by somebody and we remember one another? Because there's a difference. So a lot of people will give a lot of great instruction about how to ghost the ghoster. I don't know. I don't know if that's really the way to do it or if we're supposed to think. If in our mind we see someone on the trails and we can't help but say, hey, haven't we met before? If we can't do that, and if we can't understand that we're meeting repeatedly for a reason to learn things together, then perhaps it is game over. If it's game over, I tell you what, this is the weirdest time for me to be smiling through it all and being happy. In the midst of all the chaos, I find pieces put them together in ways that make sense and I change the tune 
over and over. What are you dialing into? What am I dialing into? And better yet, how does it make you feel? Do you feel empty when you watch these videos? Well, maybe you only feel empty to learn more things. Did you hear the double? (laughs) I'm not trying to make anyone feel empty any more empty than I feel, which means I defer some things to a higher power. How can't I? The things that work out in our favor when we just say hello to one another for one, for one thing. Sure, to not respond is a response. In this particular era, I'm having the best time of my life, whether someone's with me or not. What I mean is, in some cases, there are absolutely energy vampires who would come up with ways to try and make you suffer because they're suffering and they're afraid of what it would be like to let go, let God. To add a T to pain, to add a cross to pain, to make it paint. Confirmation. How beautiful a day would it be if we crossed paths and said hi to one another and Confirmation. Now I'm not Bob Marley. Confirmation. Before I, as I was saying it, as if to say, hey, yeah, you're crossing the line, baby. And at the same time, I'm saying, Bob was so, he was so cheerful about what, he, he was so passionately innocent. Like a child, childlike. He was so childlike. level of creativity is a rare breed. Sometimes it only takes coddling and never ever hearing the word no to generate that type of creativity. And in contrast, sometimes it takes the power of absolute no over and over and over. Added to it an extreme flavor of scorn, like as if standing right directly in the sun exposed fully naked for an entire day with no shelter from the beating down sun. Imagine that level of scorn and still being able to feel creative. I know it exists because I've seen people a lot worse off than myself who have that level of joy. They've got the joy, 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 joy down in their heart. You guys know who we're talking about. You're watching this. You have the joy. The question is, do you choose to enjoy the joy or do you forget that you can add a T to the word pain and understand that, hey, yeah, we've all got our struggles. We've all got our cross to bear. We've got all, we've all got our sons to, to hide from. That's right, dad. You got to hide. <laughs> got to hide. You got to hide from me because I will talk with you. The question is, will you talk with me? So in order to level those questions, oftentimes I ask that of our fathers, say our father, you know, just that thought alone causes for some reason the most interesting discomfort that doesn't make sense. Remember I told you, I, I believe I mentioned I turned off the navigation system a while ago. If I didn't mention it, I apologize. I turned it off. So to give you a live account, we're 15 minutes into this almost, and I'm at a complete stop at an intersection where I know this was, this is gridlock, but I'm still not really worried about it. <laughs> Do you understand? And as soon as I laughed, I'm not kidding. Now the cars are moving. You can watch these. You can watch the video and see what I'm saying is it's actually happening. How is that? How is this possible? 
because it is happening. And there are synchronicities. And there are patterns. And sometimes we're repeating these patterns, meeting each other, not saying hi to one another, not spending nearly enough time talking with one another, viewing each other with only one purpose in mind over the course of time, not understanding how to forgive one another. We can't, we can't go on. We can't, we can't, we can't make it too many more falls before we just can't get up anymore. That's how I feel sometimes. So when you hear my energy and when you see my concern, when I say, Hey, Hey dad, can you, do you, would you even remotely want to discuss why you burned down the house just past your perspective to where you can hear my perspective where I not only don't think that you're that out of touch with reality. In other words, I believe you in the demons that you're fighting. And in order to work together against something like that, wouldn't it be nice to have a conversation? So for any father out there, step or whatever, whatever person thinks they consider themselves a role model, for anybody who thinks that it's okay to teach the future generation that it's okay to overlook one another, well, don't bother saying hello back to anybody on the trails. Whether you know them or not, treat everybody the same way. Like as if, oh man, that was kind of rude. Wonder why? What judgment led to the ghost, the ghosting even in person that we encounter with one another? And how's that energy released? I'm telling you this story. You're probably angry just like I am if you really feel the full ramifications of what I'm talking about. And at the same time, that's just something to learn from and go, ah, that's the feeling that it would introduce. So I would want to avoid causing that if I were on the other end. All we're doing is hearing another perspective. We're hearing another perspective, putting it into context where it's like, ah, okay, as the villain, I can see someone just inadvertently doing that to wreak chaos, to let, to leave everything in chaos around us is an absolute sign of not being at ease, anxiety. Making our bed should not cause someone to immediately say that you're gaslighting them or gas lamping or whatever the term is. I think it's gaslighting. I laugh because I really don't know. As I said, I was dropped on my head early as a kid beyond my control. So I cope in different ways. My memory is served up in different ways, different ways that are unique. And since they're unique, a lot of the perspectives I have will seem shockingly unique. But if you listen to them from your, from your own personal experience, just breathe in that fresh, amazing prana, breathe it in baby and enjoy it. Don't be ashamed that you're taking a breath. Enjoy it. Celebrate it. Some people are on the other side of the dirt today, not taking a breath. And in a lot of cases, some of those people more recently than not have been totally overlooking self care, mental and physical. This is important, what we're talking about on this channel. If you believe this is important, give this a channel a thumbs up. This is every bit as important as the prepping that we're doing and all of the other levels of prepping that we're prepping. We're all chipping in in the weirdest ways that we didn't even know we could. I'm there with you. I feel your pain and I raise it with a T and I make it into paint, to paint a picture. Sometimes it's dark, sometimes it's sinister looking, sometimes it's just we can't make these stories up. The synchronicity of us crossing paths over and over with or without saying hi to one another to give each other those maybe the four worlds chance. Maybe this is the fourth go round. Maybe there is a purgatory. Maybe there is a heaven. Maybe there is a... And at the same time, here we are. The judge of who? Of whom? Whom shall I judge?
You're not the boss of me. <laughs> the funny thing is, all of this makes sense to everyone who's caring to listen to this. Everyone who's caring to carry the same burden by hearing with the same emotion, by tuning in to the same vibe, by resonating. We're all hearing things on the same frequency. Whichever word I chose that resonated with you personally, well, that's fine. What we're trying to do is make sure we're paying attention over the course of time. If we're not paying attention, we might find that the answers and the solutions to the things that we ourselves asked for solutions for are right there, right in front of us usually. One time I was trying to wrap something and I was thinking that I was going to be struggling to find what it was that I needed and there it was. Like a delivery of insight from a higher power. There it was. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? It's like every moment, of course, we're able to think the same. We, we know each other. We're playing each other in different roles throughout time. There's just certain elements that for what whatever reason seem like they're poof up and going to vanish like a ghost. Certain elements that don't make sense in terms of how things disappear. It doesn't make sense. And it's not even you who I'm talking to, whoever's listening to this, it's just a general idea to say, if I was on the receiving end of that, I might feel a little bit down, you know? Thankfully, I already understood. I read the book. I, I read ahead. I studied again for the test. You guys know how I was in school. Those of you who went to school with me, I paid attention. Somehow I trained, I, I understood everything that was being said because it was like, this is important for this reason, you know, and there are levels. If you listen to a comedian who talks about certain family strife, where is there a gray area when it comes to committing harm towards any of your family members or anyone for that matter? Is there a gray area? He jokes about it. People laugh because it's true. Is there a gray area? Are there certain elements that we need to be particularly mindful of in terms of who we are giving glory to when we make these choices? I just heard a, a I believe it was a Blue Jay call. In fact, my, like I nodded almost like both the ego and spirit were in sync. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Does anyone click on the thumbs up right now just because they're like, man, you, I understand what you're saying exactly. I'm tuned into you. I get it. I understand now. If you understand what I'm saying, then you're going to hear what I'm saying is that I'm taking you on an adventure that you're asking for. You're watching this because you asked for it. You have the chance to help shape it and if you want to leave the unwritten portion to me, that's fine too. And I'm going to one up you and ask you the extreme favor of clicking on the thumbs up and or clicking on the description and just read what I wrote. Does it make sense? Can you read what I wrote? Is the power of positivity compelling you to not, not see things? Can you see clearly? If you can see clearly, you can understand that the part the road goes on forever and the party never ends. That's that that's the punchline. It's like that is absolutely the message. And we have to be very aware of what the cost is for whatever we're introducing into our lives in exchange for this pacification that we can receive how do we make it the most effective that it can be for me I'm talking to millions of people right now in my dreams I talk to auditoriums of people the biggest struggle that I always have is getting people's attention and in a lot of cases it takes some 
sidekick. And I don't mean that in a demeaning way. What I mean is it's the physical beauty of that sidekick that gets the audience's attention. Let's just say Wheel of Opportunity was a television show. And you had two people who were tending to the show for the general audience. What would they sell to us? So in my dreams, I feel like my obstacle is I kind of need someone talking these things through with me who can participate, whether they're in the back seat, side seat, in another vehicle on, in, on a comm system. I mean, we're wired up for CBs in this one. End of, end of days. If certain things work, you know, it's like prepare for the worst, hope for the best. If things continue to work, we've got long distance communication. We've got backups for the backup. As one of my best prepper friends has ever told me, got to have backups for the backup and think of using things out of context. So for about a half hour segment here, you've been thinking, you know, wow, I was, I was hearing a story about one thing. I'm not quite sure what I'm listening to now, but this is completely about crossing paths with one another. I'm saying hello to you over and over. And, you know, there's, there's certain unexpected elements that come into play so ridiculously comical, comically, cosmically, they're almost like a delivery. From a higher power. When we think about crossing paths with one another, we're crossing paths with demons and angels. There are so many shows and movies that talk about all of these things. And in a lot of cases, the way we engage one another the way we engage with one another, our engagement terms, <laughs> those are the ways that we're going to be judged. So, as we wave hello to one another and don't even get looked at, as we walk past this thing in the grass, a snake, a lizard, a spider, a scorpion, tarantula, a bunny rabbit, baby deer, as we walk past this life, not hearing the birds chirping because we've got our blasting things that are playing for everything within a 0.35 mile radius of you. Say you like judgmental. Didn't it sound pretty crude? What I meant was I used to be a noisy, noisy toddler, noisily. I used to be a noisily myself. <laughs> We've got a lot of noiselies, and it's not an unlearned behavior, it's a learned behavior, because right now we're trying to stop the jitters, the anxiety that allows us to focus for long enough to just be like, remember that time when Bob Marley was on stage and the, you know, remember that time when Ray was talking about this stuff and the, the delivery trucks were delivering message and, and when, you know, it's like, what else happened? There were some other things that happened during this drive itself. The, the radar detector chimed to chime these answers. You, you know, it's like the synchronicities of everything that we talk about sometimes come into play during our dreams even. And in our dreams, if we can really think about what happened throughout the day, Sometimes we can replay things. And sometimes, if we're lucky enough, we can just have an amazingly lucid dream where we learn things that we never knew we wanted to learn, like playing music. Today, it wasn't, a, wasn't a, uh, an overwhelmingly hot day, although I'm sitting out here with the air conditioner on. However, it was quite warm. So I still already had intentions though of after walking the trail, playing guitar right there where I was. And I did. 
and I have a guitar pick which is currently one of my favorite investments ever. I got Eco Picks and I got these Glow in the Dark Picks. The Glow in the Dark Picks last quite a long time. The Eco Picks, I shred them like you would not believe. So when people ask about what I've been, what I, what I enjoy talking about and why I enjoy talking about it and why I changed my banners and why I talk about how some of these things like this clip makes it a little more difficult to put onto my pocket one-handed but I can switch that out when I talk about these thoughts like preppers when I talk about our attitude of gratitude shining through in the very work that we produce and when I talk about the aspect of treating each other like we would want to be treated how rude is that to just be able to not wave back to someone who's saying hi to you? And in a lot of cases, I look up and try to defer my, my look because I'm trying to be polite. Some people think I'm intimidating. I don't even know how you see me when you see me on the trails, whether it's with glasses on or not. With long hair or short, right now I have long hair. It needs to reach a certain length before I'm able to donate it. With facial hair or not, with gray or not, you know, how we see each other and how we treat one another, does it vary based on a myriad of anticipations or does it remain constant like, this might be a kid, this is someone, you know, I can say hi to, we're going we're gonna to talk, it's going to be amazing and for whatever reason it's going to become perfectly clear why we're here talking with one another and we're going to feel at ease at that from that moment, from that moment on. We're going to walk the path understanding. Got another friend. Isn't that all we are in the long run? We're either seeing each other as friends or not. How you see me might be a little of how you see yourself if you're seeing anxiety. And I say that because I had to recognize that in myself first. I'm not calling you out saying I've been there I keep being there with certain things that present themselves to me which are my shortcomings my shortcomings might or might not be anything at all like yours and my pain may or may not be anything at all like yours and I acknowledge that we both can have pain and understand that pain for sure leads to different things happening as a result of said pain so sometimes there's dark artwork sometimes there's representation of things in nature symbols of nature that some people would see as scary sometimes it's basically having loyalty to or expressing loyalty to something for some reason sometimes it's just a symbol that looks so awesome and it's got like a hologram effect sometimes it has to do with that amplifier has one of the coolest names ever, doesn't it? And it's a color, how fun. Sometimes it's a variation, an alternate reality of something that exists in the wild, but in someone's yard tended to and nurtured into a certain direction, maybe that scruffy tree can become a totally amazing shade tree instead of just like a bush you know I know everything that I say can be taken so many different ways and right now all we're trying to do is understand or you know are we are we taking everything so seriously that we can't laugh with one another are we friends are we still friends are we friends yet were we ever friends? All of those things that we think about as we see one another, I was waving to one of my neighbors, as we see one another and as we talk with one another, which we do, these are encounters 
that we were given for some reason. And I get reminded of the same things that you yourself were reminded of when you go, wow, that's deep. You know, I can't believe that. Well, I see the same things. We're all mirrors. And in order to learn stuff, sometimes we have to give up the ghosting <laughs> in order to actually mend what some people would tell you is it's not worth mending. I don't know. I don't believe so much in that. I believe more in the power of joy. And so as I'm telling you, hey, we can communicate. We don't have to agree to disagree. And also, I'm not going to be spat upon for things that don't, uh, don't make sense. Help me understand the ghosting in your continued ghosting or help me understand what we can now term ghostbusters <laughs> i mean it already exists aren't there movies and trailers coming out from movies that we already kind of know the punchline of why are they rebooting them who's paying for what why are we paying for certain things what are we doing for climate challenges? During the time of global warning, what are we doing? What are we really doing? And how are we freeing one another to move past those boundaries? How are we helping people? How are we not being zero, feed, zero feedback bidders were just created to fraudulently try to if impact someone else's plans of success. How are we doing that? Speaking of that, I've got my auctions going on eBay. Please click on the description link so you can see that relevant information. And I would appreciate if there's anything that you see in there that's of interest that you consider either sharing that on your own social media platform. I don't have any other social media platforms. Um, and I'm not saying this in a way that, you know, it's like share this because you have to, I'm saying this as in there are preppers in every echelon, every stage right now who are feeling the same levels of pressure and possible fear and anxiety. And then there are people who are still creative and going, Hey, I understand. Let's figure out how to do this on a scale that makes sense, you know, without, without figuring out why it is that we keep meeting in time, you know, why we keep passing each other. Are we supposed to say hi to each other? Are we, what? Hey, howdy from Texas. This is Ray once again, and you've spent another almost 40 minutes of sobriety. I hope you're sober. If you're not sober and you're doing something that you regret, who put those choices into your hands? Who can we blame? Can we blame the illness for long enough to feel good for the rest of our lives? Or can we accept peace into our lives? If you can accept peace, type amen. Can I accept peace? Can I add a T to pain? Can I make something, a story with color, beautiful blue, vibrant colors and nature, wildlife, tune into the rest of my channel, not just these long talks, understand that this message, it's driven. That's the way that someone who is passionate talks not trying to scare anyone off. I'm not trying to one up anything. I'm not trying to turn on and turn off fans. I'm not trying to call out synchronicities in the form of radar detector chimings that are so random that you might be like, man, this guy is rambling, ranting. I'm, I'm just, just like you. I'm just like you. And the way I treat your channel is the way I would want to be treated on my channel. 
the way I treat my garden is the way I would want to treat your garden. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm going to do those things by my na my own nature. If in my nature is to bring chaos around me, then chaos is going to be there continuously, indefinitely, without ever being considered as to, hey, can I slow down to avoid any of that chaos? Can I ever have slowed down to avoid any of that chaos that I did not like? For me, adaptive cruise control was a lifesaver. It absolutely did the trick for helping me to enjoy those levels of chaos a little bit differently. So as this technology was introduced, it was more than my obligation to do that so that the next person in line who owns this vehicle would have that amazing feature. This feature always needs to be put in existence. I vote for it. I voted. I voted. I voted. People tell me that they think I didn't, didn't vote. There were a lot of birds that just flew right in front of me, a flock of them. So that's about all I've got to say for this episode. Uh, I know I post a lot of episodes. I know there's a lot of people trying to figure out, well, how do I get through this situation? My family literally burned down the house on communication. And the first thing I want to do is let's talk about responsibility. How are we going to help people who caused the damage to be involved in reconstruction? Because the person who caused the damage and feels responsible for it and understands responsibility oftentimes is the best the best solution period once someone can see the other perspective and understands the hurt they caused one of the things they would like to do is undo the hurt that they caused how do i know that because i have caused hurt if i've caused hurt the last thing i want to do is continue that hurt unless i'm just a cruel person and it turns out there's either a lot of cruel people in the world right now, or there are some people who are just not quite hearing the whole message. When you hear the whole message, please try to communicate, try to figure everything from the aspect of best intent. Don't immediately go for the screwdriver when you go head over to the neighbors if you're upset with the neighbors. <laughs> These are... They're so funny I couldn't help but laugh. It's terrifying, the times that we're living in. If your family is misbehaving like anyone in my family, I feel your pain. I'm not calling anyone out. I don't mean to be rude, but I ain't got time to be nice. You said the house is on fire. You don't have to tell a guy twice. It's a song. I wrote it before my family member set the house on fire. Either I'm telling the future or I just see things coming in a way that causes me to pause and say, hey, am I angry at someone or am I postponing dealing with a feeling? Dealing with a feeling. That, that line sounds so good. It sounds like it'd be in a song or something. Dealing with the feeling. Dealing with the feeling and the feeling is mine. Rolling through the day knowing it's going to be fine. Something like that, you know? just comes to mind it's creativity i can add i can make a sound some kind of sound loop and write the write the whole thing all day long over and over in ways that are happier and happier and happier and i would Be remarkable inconsiderate, remarkably inconsiderate for not saying so, but if I waved hi to 50 people today and two said hello back to me, it might be different from walking by and waving to 50 people and 50 people waved back. Or if they immediately, when they saw me, thought, hey, there's someone on the trail. You know, towards the end of my walk, there were two people in front of me. 
one person was kind of leading the way, the other person was on their device. And the person leading the way turns back and he goes, move over, man. And he said that because he noticed he was, he had his back turned to me for a while. They were standing kind of in the middle of the trail. And, um, and when he turned around and saw me, I mean, I was getting kind of close, not close enough to where I even needed to slow down, but it's like, he didn't even know I was in his proximity because they weren't really watching. And so, so he turns and says to his friend, Hey, move over. And he steps over and the, you know, and he, and his look, he was like, dude, I thought that you were telling me to move over because there was some kind of wild animal or something the way he told him, but he didn't tell him with urgency. He just told him with just a slight level of elevated, you know, perception. It's like, this guy's moving, you know, we're standing still. And I noticed late to tell you late, you know, who are, you're already not paying attention and I got to tell you. So anyway, he had a level of anxiety, not anxiety, but stress, something, you know, you guys know what I'm talking about. It'd be like if you were pulling out of a parking space and there was uh, someone, you know, waiting, someone you, and you're waiting for this person to pull out of the parking space and then someone else comes from the other direction. It's like there's a perceived anxiety. So anyway, so this person, he goes, man, I thought you were telling me to, to move over because there was some kind of wild animal coming or something. And I turned back and I said, I am a wild animal. And we all, we all laughed. It was funny. It was funny because it's like, that was all, it, it was just like a natural conversation that kids might joke around about. And we all felt light like kids. There was nothing, there wasn't me being like, you know, here's this guy on his phone. He's not paying, there's not me saying, you know, this guy's not even going to say hi. I've just kind of come to accept whatever, accept whatever happens, happens. And if we interact at all and brighten each other's day, I hope to God that I brighten the day of whoever I said, I am an animal, you know, and we, basically we all laughed at it. I hope to God that I brighten their day. I hope to God I brightened your day with some of the stories that I'm telling you. I hope to God that you're understanding that we're still another 47 minutes away from having done something that we regretted somehow, if we're watching this video, if we're really paying attention to it, if we're paying attention to it with full attention, then we're understanding, wow, you know, I, I did it. I went through this. I want to watch something else on this vibrational frequency. I want to see where this guy tells me that nature has a vibrational frequency that is as high. It might seem like it's causing anxiety because of the music that's playing, but let me let it play. And I'll even try to hear the words this time, because that guy is saying some truth. If you believe I'm saying truth, you need to click on the thumbs up, click on like, understand that even though I'm sharing truth, my version is only as clear as my own vision. And so I have room for improvement and I'm able to ask where you think I'm misstepping. I'm able to defer the authority as I need to. If you are having trouble and you need to defer the authority to someone else who's learned certain things, I can tell you, you can overcome addiction. You just have to want to. If you don't want to overcome addiction and you want to continue to find ways to judge other things that are impairing conversations that are happening today, you may continue in that lifestyle. You have the right to. You don't have the right to judge me for saying that you have the right to be an addict or a less inconsiderate person. You don't have to judge me for saying, Hey, if we don't make our bed, that's a surefire indicator that we're basically overlooking one another. If we don't learn that calling some people names behind their back or in open groups because of this fear is wrong, if we don't understand how bearing false witness against somebody is wrong, then we run into a very powerful epoch, epoch. We run into a very powerful time when our very decisions are going to be weighted against almost pure innocence and overwhelming amount of hostile judgment. I say almost overwhelming because someone who's completely at peace, well, it might hurt quite a bit to talk about 
something akin to a crucifixion. And it might be quite an example to at least discuss to the point where it's like, man, that is a pretty interesting tale. There's a lot of pain in that story. What if you add that cross to the to the pain, you know, the T. Add the T to the pain and make it into paint and tell a story. That's what the good book did. The good book that talks in ways where you think, man, it's telling me I'm bad. It's telling me I'm good. What's it telling me? With whose ears are you hearing? With whose ears are you hearing the story? With whose eyes are you seeing the story? In this case, you're seeing it. With whose eyes are you seeing the story? With yours, with mine. Only you can answer those questions. As a friend, if I noticed anything unusual occurring, I would be res- I would be responsible to say and share those insights. If I were in a parking garage and I was just now parked, I'm talking, you know, with my with my tribe right now. I'm talking with my friends. Maybe I'm on a live call, but if I saw someone on the other side of the parking lot, somehow they just accidentally crashed into a car and they quickly just backed out and took off. Would I make note of what just happened? Would I be a narc? Will somebody ever stand up for responsibility on their own or do sometimes we have to be nudged along by people who are rowing in a ship that it's either sinking into cataclysms or there are a powerful few of us enough who are able to withstand the charges that are about to ensue because, hey, challenge accepted, baby. You want me to write the ship? How honored would I be to try and do something where it was still less complex than we make it out to be? How honored I would be enough to where it's like, I also don't, it's not like it's my, it was, I didn't feel like it was ever my destiny to be viewed by millions of people. That's the power of the internet though, right? And when people view us a certain way and contribute energy, it can be very difficult, overwhelming to handle if it's dealt out to us in ways that are less than affectionate. And you see that in the celebrity world where people can say such cruel things to people. Can you imagine other any other challenges being added to that? Skin color, overall um, health, generalized health. I can imagine, I can imagine, but not the same way that I could imagine if I actually lived it that way for the whole time. And I'm saying once we're more calm, all of us, we can move through no matter what we got placed in, no matter what situation we're in, whether we're in a cage, mentally or in reality, I believe that we can think of each other, think of each other in ways that include forgiveness for the anxiety that some people have caused to us purposefully and accidentally. And also not just to include forgiveness, but to be grateful for those lessons that we learned while we had the opportunity to learn those lessons. Does that make sense? So once we were able to learn our lessons from from the teacher, do we have to continue to be in the presence of the teacher to continue learning, to continue the quest? When we receive a certain level of guidance and we're at a certain level of skill, can we continue on with our own journey? And also, are we supported in those journeys? Do our fathers support us in these journeys or is it up to us to support one another and click on the description and read, Hey, you know, I really could use your thoughts here. If you think that this is good, help me with this. 
if I have to do this to do that, it's gonna cost you know gas money and it's not that's not endless and I don't wanna create more debt. And at the same time, I wanna do this efficiently. How can I help? If I've gotta deliver something to some something in the East Coast, can I combine the trip, you know? How many ways can I make this journey creative enough? Can I, you know, do I visit somebody? and help to achieve a mission that you're trying to to achieve do i help build your your infrastructure in ways where i recommend what i think might need to happen or even be subtracted from a situation to make it more appealing to make it more peaceful uh, what am i what am i trying what am i here to bring to the table is it my just my beautiful face there's a dragonfly a huge dragonfly that just flew over the front window beautiful is it just am i just a dragonfly am i just here to bring you the dragonfly song you know five 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 is it like is it a numerical thing are we at you know just a while ago it said 55 minutes and 55 seconds is it is it a is it a synchronicity thing is it what is it that brought us together was it just that we crossed paths on the trail and i you know said howdy and you know what happened next what is it that brought us together on these trails of life was it destiny was it destiny's child <laughs> was it our fathers You'd be surprised I continue to find that when I pray for things I run into situations where some of the most unusual conversations occur and it's typically in a format where again I believe that some of us are seeing each other over and over and it's within in some cases less than a couple of weeks that we literally can forget whatever happened two or three weeks ago if we're not sound of mind so why are we talking for this long about these things why are we talking about addiction for so long and the different things that can happen from it? Why are we talking about responsibility? Why are we talking about things where I feel like I myself am being accused of doing these things? Why, are, why am I even standing to hear this? Is it to strengthen my, my own well-being or is it to strengthen other people's well-being? Depends on what household you run and, and, and what you're running it for. So we're given time to invest in something that we can return to the father to re return to the source and if we're given all of that time and energy and we're not investing it that's the same thing as as just living a good life i guess if we're oblivious to the fact that we could be doing better, well, that's fine. And in our very own midst, if we're anxious, it's impossible to be oblivious to that because all we have to do is take a look around. Is our house in order? Are we calling out people saying things are in disorder when our own house is in disorder. Yeah, I've done that. I can see the direction that we all can go. I can see that at a certain point, we're literally gonna set house, house fires. <laughs> we're gonna do things that could harm others or ourselves and for sure put people at risk. Whether it's leaving bottle caps all over the floor of the wilderness areas that we're in or just overlooking one another and not saying hi to one another. We're, we're being careless with our resources. Let's try to be a little less careless is basically the message that I get out of my walks. And also be aware that energy has to resonate in certain ways back and forth. And so in that instance where you feel a little bit of delivery of venom, well, I felt some myself and I didn't mean to describe that feeling like with a mind meld like Spock had to do with transference of emotions and I believe it tells a complete story if you're able to hang on for that long so till next time we've spent an hour enjoying peace love and all that old school stuff here on this channel thanks for watching 
please click on subscribe. Thank you for sharing. That's it.